Okay, yeah. Thank you for the invitation to give the talk. Uh, uh, really uh, nice to see everyone, uh, although they're online, uh, but it's uh, great to see uh, old friends. Uh, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, our recent work uh, about the shear viscosity of particle matter under two body scatterings. Uh, so here is uh, my outline. So first I will uh, uh, discuss the motivation for this work. And then I will uh, introduce to you uh, two body scatterings, isotropic scatterings uh, versus forward angle scatterings. And then uh, I will compare uh, different methods in their calculation of the shear viscosity eta and also eta over s ratio. Uh, then after we uh, uh, examine the analytical methods, uh, I will apply a method to the particle matter in the MPT model and uh, calculate uh, these uh, uh, shear viscosity related quantities. Uh, and then finally, I will summarize. So this is based on a recent work with my uh, master's student at ECU, uh, Noah McKay, uh, who is also uh, online uh, up here, uh, who I invited to be here. So uh, it's uh, just published uh, last year. Uh, as we know, uh, the uh, shear viscosity is a important uh, quantity uh, for nuclear physics and uh, uh, for example, uh, the energy momentum tensor can be written uh, or decomposed into uh, such forms uh, where the uh, shear viscosity will appear in uh, a term like here. And, uh, uh, but for hydrodynamics, uh, shear viscosity eta or the eta over s ratio uh, is an input function to the, uh, to the model. Uh, however, for uh, transfer models or kinetic theory, we know that the shear viscosity uh, is not an input parameter, but they are. Uh, but uh, the shear viscosity is generated by the interactions in the uh, theory or in the transfer model. So we would like to know what's the relation between the interaction and the shear viscosity, uh, how to calculate it analytically. Uh, and uh, for high energy nuclear physics, uh, for example, uh, people have uh, uh, compared the data with different models, for example, hydrodynamic models, because it over S is uh, easily uh, incorporated in that uh, uh, model. And uh, by comparing the data to, with the model, one can try to extract the it over S ratio. Uh, here is a extraction uh, uh, shown in this work. Uh, of the eight over s ratio of the quark one plasma as a function of uh, temperature. So here is temperature over some critical temperature. Uh, so uh, we can see that uh, the eight over s ratio extracted is very low. Uh, is uh, lower than other uh, typical materials like water or helium. And also it's uh, not far from the uh, conjectured bound from uh, uh, field theory for some field theory uh, 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 frameworks uh, and the, where the bound is one word for pi. Uh, but we, we see that uh, there's a temperature dependence uh, which could be extracted from the data. And also uh, uh, there is a large error bond, uh, here uh, shown, as shown by the band for the eight over S of the extracted uh, uh, plasma as a function of temperature. So um, in this study, we are uh, we limit ourselves to only to consider uh, massless part of matter with Boltzmann statistics. Uh, we assume it's in thermal equilibrium and it uh, only has two to two elastic uh, scatterings. So uh, let's look at uh, uh, the cross section of the scatterings. The simplest cross section might be the uh, isotropic scattering cross section, where uh, we say the, uh, for example, in the two parton rest frame or in the two parton CM frame, the cross section is independent of the solid angle of the scattering of one of the parton. Uh, and this is the omega, the solid angle or the change of the angle uh, of one parton uh, from the initial state to the final state. 
So we say, uh, if d sigma d omega is a constant, independent of the angle theta or phi, then it's a, a isotropic scattering. And if so, then the total scattering cross-section sigma is just a uh, four pi solid angle times the differential cross-section d sigma d omega. So uh, uh, anyway, this uh, is a constant. So that's the isotopic case. However, in general, we have uh, uh, we don't have an isotopic uh, case. For example, in PCD or in uh, uh, nuclear physics, we have uh, like the, the Rutherford scattering. They are typically forward angle. So uh, we also consider forward angle scattering. And uh, as an example in this study, we will take the uh, partner cross section used in AMPT, uh, which is also used in uh, John's partner cascade or Mona's partner cascade. These are partner cascade models. So uh, this is the exact uh, uh, angular distribution or d sigma d t hat, where t hat is the uh, two part on Mendelssohn variable, which uh, corresponds to the uh, momentum uh, exchange of uh, one of the part. Uh, so uh, d sigma d t can be written as basically one over t square or t hat square, but uh, uh, since uh, it diverges when t goes to zero, so people need to screen it or to uh, regulate it uh, by a spinning mass mu. So uh, we, we write uh, t hat minus mu squared together square. So that, this is the angular distribution. And then we uh, this is the tree factor, which depends on the strong coupling constant alpha s. And then uh, uh, in this way, uh, uh, we uh, uh, describe the angular distribution. And this distribution is based on the PQCD two gluon scattering cross-section, uh, where the two gluon cross-section uh, without the screening mass is written as uh, uh, this form, where you can see the uh, dominant part in principle or the divergent part is in the t-hat and u-hat terms, and uh, which are symmetric. So we combine the two, like the t-hat square uh, term, uh, plus some screening mass. Uh, it's not exactly the two gluon scattering cross section, but it is uh, a simplification uh, of the two gluon cross section. And you may notice that uh, there is a one plus a factor here. Uh, in principle, if you reduce the two gluon cross section, you don't have this uh, one plus a. This is just a one, and uh, this a parameter is uh, mu square over s hat. Uh, mu is the screening mass, and the s hat is the uh, two part on central mass uh, energy. And uh, uh, we call this parameter A. And uh, we add this term to make the total cross section to be uh, S hat independent. In other words, the part on cross section will be independent of the central mass energy of the two part uh, And then uh, as a result, uh, this uh, sigma, the total cross section is just uh, proportional to alpha s square over mu square. So as we know, uh, as we see, uh, mu, this uh, screening mass, uh, determines both the total cross section as well as the angular distribution. And then uh, uh, people uh, invented a term uh, transport cross section. So we should be right as sigma transport, sigma tr here. Uh, this was uh, probably first defined in this uh, paper by uh, Mona and uh, Mikosh. And uh, uh, the exact uh, definition is the angular distribution uh, uh, of the uh, partial cross-section times the sine theta square. Uh, here, theta is the scattering angle of one of the partons in the two part on CM frame. So uh, as we can see, just uh, the cross section weighed by the square of the scattering angles sine function. And uh, basically uh, we can see that if the uh, scattering angle is very small, when theta is about zero, then uh, uh, it gives you a small contribution or small weighting to the that partial cross section uh, because uh, naively, the scattering at uh, almost zero angle is not effective in transferring the uh, momentum. And on the other hand, if you have 90 degree uh, scattering, uh, if theta is 90 degree, then this is the 
maximum one, and then you get uh, a bigger weight. So uh, that's why people thought uh, transport cross section uh, should be used to uh, uh, describe momentum transfer. Uh, that's why it often appears in the shear viscosity uh, formula, uh, which we will see uh, very often uh, next. Then uh, based on this definition, if we look at the uh, isotopic scatterings, then uh, one can easily see that the transport cross section is just uh, two thirds of the total cross section. And, but for forward angle scattering, uh, if you do the integral, then it turns out that uh, the transport cross section is not a constant. It depends on both the total cross section, uh, cross section sigma, as well as uh, the parameter A which we defined uh, previously. So it's uh, this kind of function of A uh, times sigma. So we uh, can write it as H A, H uh, function of A times sigma. Uh, if we plot H A versus A, then you'll get this uh, shape. It goes from zero and uh, goes up to monotonously to two thirds. So uh, we can understand this uh, easily because uh, if you look at A, uh, this A parameter, if A is very small, uh, much smaller than one here, uh, it means uh, if you look at the angular distribution, uh, T sigma dt, you can see that uh, it represents a very forward scattering, a forward peak scattering, where each scattering is not very effective, right? Because the scattering angle is small. Therefore, this uh, HA, which is like the weighting uh, for that uh, uh, scattering, is small. It's almost zero. But uh, when A is much bigger than one here in this region, uh, then the angular distribution is going almost isotropic. Then this HA uh, goes to two thirds as uh, what happens for the isotropic scattering first. So this HA function can be called uh, the anisotropy function. So we'll see this HA function very often uh, in, in later slides. So I call it the, uh, the anisotropy function, which uh, basically uh, represents how effective the, uh, the partial cross-section is or the cross-section is. Uh, then uh, for thermal system, no, uh, very often we need to do thermal average because if the uh, even if the cross section is a constant, the sigma transport the transport cross section is not constant because as we have seen, it just uh, uh, in the previous slide it uh, depends on this uh, a parameter, and the a parameter is mu square over s. So even if I fix the spinning mass mu, uh, a parameter changes for each two to two scattering because s hat is the two to two uh, scattering central mass energy. So a parameter is different for every two to two scattering in a thermal gas. Therefore, we need to you know, uh, basically do some thermal average. And for particle matter in thermal equilibrium at temperature T, uh, because we consider Boltzmann statistics, the thermal average is given in this paper as, uh, for example, if you, uh, uh, the thermal average is just uh, some average over uh, uh, this function. And the K here are uh, just uh, the uh, Bell's functions. And for the therm uh, thermal average of a uh, transport cross section, remember that transport cross section is H A times sigma, right? So if we uh, do the thermal average of uh, H H times sigma, then I will get H uh, weighed by this uh, function. Uh, it's an integral over U, where H depends on another parameter W and U. And W, is uh, mu over t, uh, so the uh, uh, so the spinning mass over the temperature. So if you integrate over u, then you get a function of w, and uh, uh, we call it the sigma h zero w, because uh, uh, without the sigma average, you remember uh, that the sigma transport is sigma times h a. And here, this h zero is uh, similar to h a, is uh, just an uh, average of the anisotropy function H. And uh, it also behaves uh, similarly, qualitatively is the same. Uh, at uh, when W is uh, very small, H0 is uh, approaching zero. And when uh, W is very large, then it approaches two thirds. So H0W 
is another kind of uh, anisotropy function. So that's the thermal average of the transport cross section. Then let's look at uh, uh, different methods that we can use to calculate uh, uh, shear viscosity of a part of matter. Uh, there are several analytical formulas, uh, formula uh, here. Uh, and I, uh, we have shown here uh, basically all of them that we can find. Uh, for example, the easier stored method uh, written as IS here. Uh, says that uh, for isotropic scattering, the eta, the shear viscosity is a six times t over five sigma. And for navy Stokes method, uh, 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 first pointed out in this paper, the uh, eta is uh, similar. But instead of a six over five, uh, which is 1.2, it's a 1.26 uh, something t, uh, t over sigma. Uh, again, for isotopic statements. Uh, and then uh, people have uh, uh, analyzed the problem using the realization time of approximation, which we call RTA, uh, and uh, get uh, uh, the shear viscosity as 40 over 5C, which is uh, like 50% uh, different. And then uh, there's also a modified version of the RTA uh, method, which uh, we call RTA star. Actually, this was called RTA star first in this paper uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, that uh, modified uh, formula uh, writes it at 60 over 5 sigma, the same as uh, the usual squared uh, formula, as you, you can see. And then there's uh, uh, the Chapman uh, Ansgok method, where the this shear viscosity is depending on temperature and some other factors, which we will see later. And this was derived also about uh, 10 years ago. And uh, uh, we can see that the, uh, the, the, uh, the analytical results are kind of a little bit different. And, uh, uh, but we also have numerical results, which uh, is uh, valid for uh, equilibrium or near equilibrium. And that's the green kubel relation. And, uh, 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 we know that uh, uh, one can calculate the correlator, um, energy momentum tensor correlator uh, as function time, uh, averaged over uh, uh, time and volume, etc. And then uh, if you integrate it over, then it's related to the uh, shear viscosity. And basically, people can uh, extract a relaxation time from the correlator as function time and get this uh, tau realization time, then uh, times the energy density with some factor, then that gives the uh, shear viscosity numerically. So that's the isotropic case. And how about the anisotropic case? Well, how about the general case? For the general case, uh, uh, what's done is for the first three methods, the Israel stored the nearest slopes and the RTA, uh, star methods, people have generalized those formula by using uh, uh, transport cross-section instead of cross-section. So for example, right, uh, when I see sigma, I will re write it as sigma transport, but uh, write uh, you know, three halves times sigma transport so that they're the same for isotopic cross-section uh, scatterings. So if you do that uh, kind of uh, repl replacement, then the uh, it's a third formula for an isotopic scattering becomes 40 over 5 sigma transport. And uh, uh, as we said, sigma transport is not a constant, so you need to, to do the thermal average. So that's the uh, bracket. And then we have seen that uh, the thermal average is just the sigma times uh, anisotropy function, H0. So uh, in the end, uh, the Isworth's third formula is 40 over 5 sigma divided by H0, which uh, depends on the, this omega parameter. And then uh, new Stokes is just a little bit different, 5% uh, different. Uh, for the modified RTA star uh, uh, method, they uh, inserted a uh, relative velocity of the two partons, the relative uh, together with the sigma transport and do the thermal average in this paper. And then uh, 
But for the other two methods, the analytical method, uh, Chapman and Scott, which we was uh, often call C method, uh, and that's uh, regardless of the angular distribution. So the formula is the same. Uh, say, uh, that's also the case for the green football relation. So let's uh, look uh, into more detail of the uh, two analytical methods, the RTA star. The RTA star depends on the transport cross section times the relative velocity, and then uh, the uh, their thermal average. And uh, if you work on it, the thermal average turns out to be uh, given by this formula, which uh, depends on kind of the uh, transport cross section term here in the integral. And this is the general formula for massive partons, where the uh, uh, two to two elastic scattering partons all have the mass m. And this z uh, variable is m over t of dimension is uh, variable. And for the C method, uh, this uh, uh, gamma zero over C zero zero uh, actually uh, can be written in this way. Uh, it's given similar uh, to the above, but uh, uh, different kind of delta functions and different kind of average uh, for the general case where you have a, the mass can be non zero for the partons. And since we are only interested in this study uh, in massless partons, so one can reduce this to the massless case, and uh, one can then get the following uh, reduction of the uh, results. So the sigma, uh, for example, for the RTSR, this term becomes this. So it's again a average of the H uh, function, H A function, and we can write it as uh, uh, sigma times another H1 function, another uh, average of the uh, HA function. We call H1 for the realization time uh, approximation. So uh, the RTA star will give you the result, will give you eight as 40 over five sigma divided by H1. For the C method, uh, uh, for the method case, uh, one can reduce this uh, uh, whole factor into this uh, integral of the HA function. Uh, and then we can name it as sigma H2 omega so that the, the eta, uh, the shear viscosity of the C method is also written as 40 over pi sigma divided by H2. So you see that the different method just uh, uh, differs in this uh, anisotropy function, in the weighting of the HA function. Then we can compare the different methods, different an analytical methods. So we consider, for example, uh, massless gluons with a cross-section of 2.6 millibar. And uh, uh, to be more exact, uh, we take the alpha s of this value. So that uh, corresponds to a spinning mass of about uh, 0.7 GE. And then the left panel shows the uh, shear viscosity from the four methods, four analytical methods as functional temperature. Uh, and we can see that uh, they are very uh, close uh, to each other. Actually, uh, Israel squared equals the result of RTSR and equals the C method, where they are the bottom line. And then the nearest token method is close by only 5% high. But overall, they are almost the same. However, if we look at the forward scatterings, then we see a difference, which can be very big at a high temperature. And uh, uh, this line is the chapman ansbach method. It's uh, higher than the rest in general, or mostly. And the other three methods, the usual squared uh, uh, RTSR and the Navier Stokes are close by, although they are not uh, uh, the same. For a nice topic of scatterings. And we also see uh, 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 that uh, they approach the same value at low temperatures. And that's not a surprise because at low temperatures, if the T is much smaller than the screening mass, then the scattering becomes more and more isotopic. I mean, the forward angle scattering in MPT. 
will get more isotopic and uh, approach the isotopic answer where the uh, different results are basically the same. So they are the same at low temperature, but they split uh, at higher temperature. So a natural question is, uh, what is uh, what method is uh, accurate? How do we know? So of course, uh, we can compare with the green Kubo numerical result. So we have done this uh, uh, green Kubo calculation of the shear viscosity of gluons in the box. And previously in this, uh, in this paper with uh, Xin Li Zhao and uh, uh, Guo Liang and uh, Yu Gang and, uh, in 2020. And uh, we have uh, calculated the correlator and uh, look at the time dependence and then fit it with the exponential, that tau, and then calculate the, or extract the uh, shear viscosity. So uh, for example, this, these results are for isotopic scatterings. And we can see that when we use the parton subdivision with a huge factor, uh, subdivision factor of uh, one million, uh, then, uh, uh, you know, uh, the typical causality violation effect, any possible causality violation effect from the cascade method of solving the Boson equation will be basically eliminated. So the results should be accurate. And if you look at the result uh, from subdivision for isotropic scatterings, that's the blue line, which is uh, uh, tracks very closely to the expectation of the Navier-Stokes uh, formula. Uh, but the uh, if you don't do the subdivision, then uh, at early time it's okay, but the later time there's second deviation. So we have Navier-Stokes formula here. But for forward angle scatterings, then uh, we we don't know which formula is correct because they are different. So numerically, we get the a blue curve again uh, from subdivision, and then we can extract uh, the shear viscosity for that uh, forward angle scattering. So we have done that for uh, different cases for for several different temperatures and cross sections, uh, and uh, extracted the eight over s ratio of the blue ones versus this parameter chi. Uh, this chi parameter is called the opacity parameter. It's defined to be the radius of the interaction of the cascade, which is the square root of sigma over pi, divided by the mean free path in lambda. So uh, it can be written as the density of the parallels times the square root of the sigma cube uh, with some factor. So this was introduced in this paper and uh, uh, this basically uh, reflects the uh, interaction strength of the uh, two body of the scatterings. You see, uh, the bigger n, the bigger density, or the bigger cross section, the bigger the kind. So uh, we have done at least four calculations for four different systems and obtained the eight over s ratio for from the subdivision results. Let's see uh, the green line here and green line here, and uh, uh, for isotopic scatterings as well as for forward scatterings. And we plot it as a function chi. Also, there is a reason for doing that because uh, if alpha s is fixed, which is uh, uh, the case for our uh, uh, calculation, then eight over s, one can show eight over s is only a function of this parameter chi. For example, for isotopic scatterings of gluons, the eight over s from the Navier-Stokes uh, uh, method is just uh, you know some number uh, divided by chi to the two thirds power, and that's why in this uh, log log plot is a straight line, this uh, uh, orange straight line. So uh, we have uh, so now we can go uh, proceed to compare the four analytical methods versus the green cover results for isotopic statements. Uh, the results we, we did in 2020 uh, for the isotopic uh, four cases are represented by the circles. We can see that all the four methods, which are basically the same, agree with the green cover results. So everything's fine for isotopic scatterings. Then let's move to panel B. Uh, if we look at forward scatterings, these four circles are the numerical results from doing approval for the four systems. 
And we see that they agree with the Chapman Unspark method pretty well, very well, but they disagree strongly with the other three analytical methods. So we conclude that uh, the CE method is the accurate method for uh, scatterings in general. Actually, this is, uh, result is not new because we found out that uh, uh, about 10 years ago in this uh, uh, reference, uh, uh, people have found that green couple results, they did their own green couple uh, simulation uh, and they show that the green couple results agrees with uh, Chapman Unstock results, as you can see here. Uh, CE method, first order CE method are the uh, curves and the uh, oh, other uh, other uh, uh, lines, and then the green cobalt results are the uh, uh, circles for different temperatures as function of the uh, screening mass MD, which is called mu in our uh, approach. Well, for the RT star, uh, the results don't agree in general with the uh, green cobalt results. And uh, that paper has uh, given the final results for the uh, shear viscosity from the RTA star method and uh, the CE method. So the CE method eta is given by this uh, 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 formula, T over sigma, which is the sigma total, and then divided by some factor, which is very similar to ours. However, uh, we found that there are two typos in this uh, formula for eta. In these uh, equations, uh, in that paper, the two tables are here and here. So the H factors, which basically the, our H A function, uh, are written like this. However, they should be uh, so. That's uh, those are the tables. They should be H of uh, of uh, one over this argument squared instead of H over this argument. And we pointed out uh, these typos in our uh, recent paper. Okay, so now uh, uh, hopefully we have established that uh, the CE method is uh, the correct uh, accurate method for uh, calculating eta for parton scatterings. So let me apply the method to study the parton matter eta or eta over s in the stream mounting and PD model for uh, AA collisions. Uh, as, uh, as we know, uh, the MPD model can reasonably describe the bulk matter, for example, the DMDY of uh, particles, the uh, PT spectrum, and also the flow, like uh, elliptic flow. And uh, the structure of the string melting MPD model is the following, but basically uh, the key uh, effect is generated by the parton cascade. And uh, so far, the parton cascade ZVC in MPD only uh, includes two to two elastic scatterings with a constant cross-section, sigma, or uh, which is uh, produced by a constant uh, swinging mass mu. And then um, some years ago, uh, we have studied the uh, uh, part of matter evolution. Uh, for example, the energy density in uh, uh, rip central global collision at 200 GeV uh, as a function of time in the center cell around the, you know, uh, x is y of zero and uh, around mid uh, pseudo rapidity. And uh, we have looked at uh, uh, how the energy density epsilon changes with time, how the particle parton density changes with time, and also how the mean PT of the partons in the cell or mean elect ET or mean energy, et cetera, change with time. And by using the typical, you know, uh, uh, thermal or, or Boltzmann relations between temperature and the epsilon or temperature with mean PT, et cetera, we can extract the corresponding effective temperatures. For example, uh, here on the right side, uh, uh, this represents the effective temperature. If I extract uh, the temperature from the energy density, then I get the, the circles, the field circles. But if I extract the temperature from the PT evolution, 
Then I get the open circuit. You see, the trends are the same, but the magnitudes are very different. And the temperature extracted from NPT is much smaller than the temperature extracted from the energy density for the center set. And uh, so that's why they are called the effective temperature. And this reflects the fact that uh, you know one can uh, one can represent uh, 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 describe this by saying the partner matter in the AMPT model is not in chemical equilibrium. Uh, if we uh, we can still assume thermal equilibrium, but uh, then the PT the mean PT corresponds to one temperature, but the energy density uh, corresponds to another temperature. And then uh, in that study, uh, we have extracted the effective temperatures for uh, lead lead collisions at uh, LHC of this energy versus time for central uh, collisions or mid-central collisions. And the black line are the temperature extracted from the energy density, and the red line are temperature extracted from the mean PT of the pattern. And then uh, you can do the same for uh, gold, gold collisions. And the solid line again is the uh, uh, central gold gold, and the dashed line represents the mid central gold gold. Again, the, uh, the temperature extracted from uh, energy density is higher than the, uh, from, than that from the mean PT. And in this uh, recent study, we will use these uh, effective temperatures to calculate uh, A to, or A over S of this center set. And also uh, for the uh, time average, we will average the uh, A to over A over S uh, with the collision rates. And then uh, here on panel C, this is the plot of the collision rate in the center cell versus time. And we can see uh, as at a very early time, the collision rate is almost zero because uh, all the partons have finite emission time in the AMPT model. Uh, and then uh, at the late times, uh, you know, the system expands and is more dilute and then uh, there is also drop. So as a result, it peaks at some time. It has this uh, structure. And this is for LHC and this is for that. And then we, uh, uh, look at the, we can calculate A to or A to S with the Chapman Unstock uh, method. Uh, first, we uh, consider, for simplicity, we consider the parton matter as a Fargoron plasma in full equilibrium, full thermal and uh, chemical equilibrium with uh, three flavor part, uh, no, three part flavors. And then we will just uh, use the temperature extracted from the energy density to calculate both the uh, shear viscosity and the entropy density. Because the in full equilibrium, there is only one temperature. Uh, so we consider, okay, the partner matter has a certain energy density. It's, we assume it's in full equilibrium, then we can calculate eta because uh, we do the thermal average of the uh, uh, transport cross section or the, you know, uh, some HA uh, thermal average, uh, kind of thermal average of the HA function. And then we can get eta. So here is the eta shear viscosity versus time for LHC and for REC. And then we can divide by the uh, entropy of the part of matter calculated with this temperature. And then we see the eta over S per for LHC and for REC. And we can see that. Uh, for LHC, the A to over S ratio is lower than that at rate. Uh, and also central collision uh, A to over S is a little bit lower than the mid central collision. And by the way, this is the one over four pi. So uh, we can see that the A to over S is very small. And this is uh, uh, changing with time. So to give a uh, Overall idea, we can do the time average. So we can average this curve by the collision rate that we showed before. And uh, uh, they are the, the magnitude of the average 
time average intervals are represented by the circle on each curve. For example, the time average the uh, HRS for central LHC is here, but for mid central is there. And for rig central is uh, here and the mid central is there. So, uh, so we can see that the average HRS is quite small. Surprisingly small, it's like, you know, two to three times the bound. Although the cross section is small, it's only you know in the MPT model, uh, in that uh, in that version of the MPT model, we use three meter bar a part on cross section. However, if you notice, uh, the H over S temperature dependence is kind of wrong, uh, uh, wrong relative to what uh, people expect. For example, from the uh, finite temperature PPCD or from the uh, the previous uh, extraction, uh, the Bayesian uh, uh, extracted A over S uh, from comparison to the data. Because uh, as we move in time, as time goes on, the temperature drops. And uh, the expectation from PQCD is that as temperature drops, the A over S should decrease. But uh, we show a uh, increase here this time. And uh, later we will see that this is a consequence of using a constant cross-section sigma in AMPD. Now, uh, as we have seen, the uh, effective temperatures extracted from different observables are different, uh, quite different. So uh, actually the Part of matter in the spring melting version of the MPT model is not in full chemical equilibrium. So if we want to take that into account, we can treat the matter as a quark gluon plasma in thermal equilibrium, but not in chemical full chemical equilibrium. We can say it's in partial chemical equilibrium. Uh, if so, then we can uh, use still use the energy density temperature to calculate the entropy because we want to not miss any, any energy in the system. But uh, we should use uh, temperature extracted from the momentum to calculate uh, shear viscosity, because shear viscosity is determined by the momentum transfer. It's determined by how the parton, how hard the parton is scattered, uh, uh, rather, than, than, rather than density. So if we do that, if we use the other temperature to calculate eta, then we get uh, this eta shear viscosity as function time. And if we divide by the uh, same uh, entropy density as before in the full equilibrium case, then we, we get the eta over s curve like that. And this is a band. And uh, as we see, if we consider the particle matter as a partial equilibrium matter, then uh, at early times, actually, the HRS can be even smaller than the bound from the model if you just plug in the effective temperatures. And the, we can still do the uh, time averaging and the average values are the dots. And we see that uh, they are very small. Uh, the LHC is uh, close to the bound and uh, it's uh, basically uh, one to two times the bound uh, uh, on average. And we can understand that uh, 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 when we treat the matter as a partial equilibrium, we get lower it over, over S because uh, the temperature extracted from PT is uh, smaller than temperature from, extracted from the energy density and a uh, lower temperature for the NGT part on cross section makes the scattering more isotropic and uh, therefore more effective. Uh, more effective means uh, lower, uh, uh, it will give you a smaller eta rates. So that's why. So, uh, so we hopefully. Uh, you mark for uh, general uh, to do scatterings, and also we can apply it to the MPT part of matter to calculate correctly the. Uh, evolution of the eta brands. And uh, uh, 
of, of course, our methods or our results will improve previous calculations of uh, shear viscosity for the proper matter. Uh, for example, in this uh, uh, study by uh, by a group of people, uh, uh, Maddie and uh, others, uh, uh, recent study, they have uh, studied the uh, uh, part of matter in MPT using the same uh, 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 MPT uh, uh, formula. Uh, and then they have uh, derived or, or estimated the shear viscosity using the usual squared formula. And they have written the shear viscosity in this form. Uh, but uh, there are several things which we should pay attention. They have used uh, this angular distribution. They have, uh, how to say, they have used the MPT, but they have written the uh, differential cross section this way. Uh, this is a little bit different from the real cross section in MPT, where we have this plus A term. So uh, that's one difference. And also they have uh, made a approximation about the summer average. Uh, as we know, the Israsberg uh, formula is uh, 5T over uh, uh, 4 sigma transport. So for the sigma transport uh, summer average, they have, you know, which depends on the A parameter or the mu square over S hat parameter. They have replaced every S hat with the average value of S hat, which, uh, you know, uh, in the thermal gases, Boltzmann gas is 18 uh, T squared. So then they obtain this formula. So in this form, uh, we have plotted this uh, shear viscosity versus uh, temperature. Uh, here, their, their formula gives the blue curve. Uh, and uh, so, now, because they uh, approximated the S hat, uh, that result is not uh, is not uh, exact thermal average. If you do the exact thermal average for the inverse work, you will get the green curve instead. So the shield is would be the green curve. However, they also neglected the one plus a parameter a factor in the MPT procession. So if you put that in, use the correct differential cross section, the IS result will change from the green curve to the uh, this purple curve. And finally, we know that uh, IS is not accurate for forward uh, for general scattering so that, like the mp2 forward angle scattering and the correct formula is uh standard answer, which is uh, the the red one so as you see uh the previous estimate after some approximations give you the blue line and now we know the correct answer should be the red one. so hopefully uh, this will uh clear up things a little bit Uh, also, uh, the preferred uh, pattern cross section for high energy A collisions like gold, gold or lead lead uh, depends on the uh, the model. Uh, for example, when we develop the new quark coalescence model for AMPT uh, a few years ago, where we improve the uh, coalescence model in AMPT by allowing a parton the freedom to form either a meson or barium. That solves, uh, that model is, uh, physically better. And uh, that coalescence, if you put that uh, coalescence model in MPT, the uh, pattern cross section seems to, uh, decrease from about three millibar to 1.5 millibar to describe the bulk matter, especially the flow. So, uh, uh, if the cross section is smaller, uh, of course, the, uh, shear viscosity or it over S will be larger, right? So if we uh, apply the C method and plot it as function of uh, temperature for three millibar, which we showed uh, in the previous slide, that's the red line. And for if the cross section is smaller, the it over S is higher by this much. So, you know, it's uh, the magnitude of enhancement is uh, depending on the temperature.
And then uh, also in in this recent uh, uh, publication, we have uh, 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 we know that uh, C method uh, depends on the H two uh, function uh, uh, integral of the H A function. And uh, uh, so for convenience, we provide also a fit function of this H two, so that we don't need to do the integral every time or or uh, do the integral at all. Uh, and the fit function uh, are uh, almost perfect. So they are represented by the uh, dot dash black line, which uh, overlaps with the exact CE method uh, result for different cross-sections. Uh, then uh, we can uh, look at uh, uh, finite temperature PKZD, let's say, where the uh, screening mass uh, the device screening mass is uh, proportional to GT. This depends on the temperature and the coupling constant. So uh, uh, like in the Amy paper a long time ago, uh, they have derived uh, the PQCD uh, uh, shear viscosity and taking the thermal uh, screening, uh, taking the screening mass uh, like this form. And then uh, the shear viscosity over entropy density has been approximated or parameterized in this form. That depends on G. Uh, if you plot it as function of time, uh, as function of temperature, sorry, then you will see this behavior. So as we mentioned before, as temperature increase, the A to S ratio increase. However, in AMPT, as we have seen, the trend is opposite. And uh, that's because we are using constant cross-section or constant uh, screening mass. If we would use a uh, temperature dependent screening mass mu as motivated by finite temperature PCB, then mu would be proportional to GT. And because sigma is proportional to one over mu square, the sigma will be one over G square T square. And at the lower temperature, sigma will be higher. So the parting cross section will depend on the temperature like this. And then at a lower temperature, or uh, then if you uh, if you look at A over S, you know, S is uh, uh, something TQ, then you can see that uh, uh, A over S uh, from uh, all these formulas qualitatively is proportional to T over sigma. And uh, once sigma is decreasing, with temperature, then this A over S will turn out to increase with temperature. And then the temperature dependence or the time dependence of the particle matter A over S will be expected. So apparently this is a, a good direction to improve the MPD model, uh, in particular the GPC particle cascade model in MPD. So, uh, now I come to conclusions. So uh, I hope I showed you that the chairman oscar method is accurate for 2 to 2 scatterings in general. The other methods are not accurate. And then we apply the C method to the uh, quantum method in the center cell of the AMPT model for high energy uh, rig or LHC uh, heavy ion collisions and found the shear response 8 over S average value to be very small, uh, about one to three times four pi, uh, uh, times uh, one over four pi, uh, despite the small cross-section. And presumably, that's why the MPD model can reproduce the flow data. With, uh, 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 even though the cross-section is small, the density is high, so the average that it over S is small. However, we see that the temperature dependence or the time dependence of A over S in the MPT model is opposite to the expectation from uh, finite temperature PQCD. And that is because of the constant mu or sigma. And uh, as a result, if we want to improve the evolution of the system or have a correct time evolution, time dependence of the A over S of the particle matter, we should improve the AMPG model 
by using a temperature-dependent cross-section for the part on cascade. And then that will lead to uh, the AMPT model being a more reliable uh, tool, dynamical model to study physics, especially the non-equilibrium physics. So with that, uh, 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 I thank you very much for attending the uh, this uh, talk. Okay, thank you very much for your nice talk. And uh, now, so we uh, any questions? Which one? 线上的朋友们就这个举手啊。哦，哦，哎哎，Thank you very much for nice talk. Uh, so I have a few questions. So as you as you see the uh, the ZPC part is basically uh uh treating the uh ideal gas, right? So as but as you mentioned, the uh shear viscosity uh getting uh in the uh AMPT is very close to <clears throat> the ideal what we call ideal uh it's very small it's close to the uh ideal fluid the viscosity of uh, ideal fluid right so yeah. but uh, how, how do we understand suppose the ideal uh, gas and ideal fluid it gives uh it gives small uh, in our ass Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure we what exactly uh, your question is. Uh, uh, but for 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 MPT for the MPT result, the mm -hmm. the small a uh, it over s is uh, because uh, because we have uh, uh, let's look at the some formula. Like we have a uh, high density, which gives a high temperature. Right. Uh, and then, uh, we have, uh, uh, yeah, it should be eight over S. Uh, this is eight. So maybe this is not, uh, uh, yeah, we cannot see it directly from here. So we have a high density part of matter. Uh, although the cross section is small, the uh, collision, the, the density is high. So the collision rate is high. And as a result, the uh, uh, HRS uh, value turns out to be small. And depending on whether we view it as a equilibrium, chemical equilibrium or not, the uh, extracted over S uh, is uh, more or less uh, above the bound, right, on, on average. So, you know, in, uh, in part on cascade, because we, we don't have the quantum physics uh, 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 real quantum physics in the model, there is no bound for the HOS, right? So if we, uh, I mean, arbitrarily increase the sigma, then our uh, HOS can go much lower than the bound. But that, that's, that doesn't mean it's true. But what's meaningful is we uh, compare to data and we, uh, for a long time, we know that uh, uh, AMPT, uh, we treat the cross section as a parameter, right? And then fit, we try to fit the data and we found that, uh, okay, a part on cascade with about three millibar cross section can reproduce the low data as well as other data. So then, uh, that fixed the uh, value from phenomenology. And then if we just uh, use those value and calculate, we'll find, we find that LOS is small. So yeah, so often we see that the uh, the the QGP is a strongly coupled system, so it has very small in our S. Uh, but it seems you show that uh, even it is a weakly weakly coupled system. Yeah, this is small cross section. Uh, uh, as you see, right? I mean, strong or weak is, I mean. Is relative, right? If one use eight over s as the measure, then this is uh, because the eight over s uh, average value is very small in the model. Uh, then this proton gas is strongly coupled. I mean, how to say uh, strongly coupled because the you know the cross section, although it's small, but density is high, right? So it's a strongly interacting 
Yes. Uh, for example, in the Parton, uh, in the Parton cascade, uh, in the in the Parton escape uh, paper that we wrote a few years ago, we have looked at the number of collisions per Parton uh, in uh, in these uh, a collisions, and uh, it's uh, pretty high. Right? It's like uh, uh, even in mid-central collisions, AA collisions at uh, both go at 200 GeV, I think the mean number is like four or five per parton. And then for central collisions is probably double that. So, uh, so through, so in the parton phase, right, uh, of, of a few Fermi, each parton collide, you know, five to 10 times. So. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you. So I have a second question. Is uh, how do you uh, expect uh, uh, now uh, if you include multiple multiple particle scattering? Uh, because we know uh, if you have multiple scatterings, then the system could uh, achieve uh, a thermal equilibrium uh, faster, much much faster, right? Yeah. Also, chemical equilibrium. Uh, you will approach chemical equilibrium, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. In principle, we sh one should uh, include uh, uh, the the other uh, all the missing processes in the pattern escape. Uh, for example, uh, we only we have two to two now, uh, but it is elastic. We should have two to two in elastic. We should have two two to three, three to two, uh, and there are uh, there are more, right? And uh, uh, all the interaction will. Uh, will change the, you know, the approach to thermal or chemical equilibrium, also change the eta, the shear viscosity. Uh, however, uh, is, uh, numeric, uh, you know, practically is very hard to do, uh, do that. Uh, so if we, uh, so, so one way, Maybe one, you know, it's very difficult to include the uh, two to two, three to two, especially if you don't do part on subdivision. I think uh, actually there's almost no, no existing method that does that, right? So people do uh, part on subdivision to get to uh, the, the dilute limit and do stochastic methods, et cetera. However, once you do oversampling for subdivision, then you destroy the correlations or fluctuations, which we don't want to sacrifice in the transfer model. So, so it's uh, it's uh, hard to do. But uh, uh, we thought of uh, maybe uh, uh, easier way would be to do one to two, two to one. So one one can hopefully do do it much easier in, uh, with the cascade method. Uh, and then that will provide a uh, inelastic uh, process at least. Uh, you, you mean it's still uh, quite ch challenging to do uh, strictly cool in the uh, in the casket in the in the geomet geometric method, right? Two to three, three to two. Uh, there is no geometric method so far. Uh, I think no one knows how to do it uh, with the cascade method. But people, uh, more than one group has done the stochastic method by right? using cells and then, uh, do a part on subdivision or so called test particle method and then calculate the rates and, uh, and do it that way. But that way, as I said, modifies or destroys the fluctuation of is essential for transport, uh, uh, model because transport uh, uh, I think the, the biggest advantage of transfer model relative to, to hydro, you know, transfer is a realization of kinetic theory, right? So the, uh, the biggest advantage is it can address nine equilibrium physics, uh, and, uh, and where the fluctuation correlations are important. So we, uh, don't want to sacrifice that. Um, and then there's, uh, no existing way of doing it for, to do three, three, two, two. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I have a perfect mark here uh, at the, the meeting. And uh, any questions? Uh, so, we, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, thank you for your uh, excellent talk. Uh, it has deepened our understanding uh, of serious culture uh, from the uh, transport model uh, perspective. And uh, my question is uh, that the serious culture depends on uh, like bion chemical potential. Uh, do we need to consider uh, the the mu b depends on uh, dependent the uh, shear viscosity? Yeah, implicitly, right? Uh, so uh, we we don't uh, we uh, our work does not address that yet, but uh, we know how to address that because uh, uh, we can extend this to all two 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 scatterings. Right, one can calculate uh, blue on quark, QQ bar, QQ uh, scatterings, and then apply a uh, two to two scatterings. Let's say let's limit uh, us, ourselves to two to two scatterings. Then we can use the CE method to describe every order leading order two to two processes, and then uh, you can then you need to. Uh, for the parton matter, you need to average uh, over these uh, parton species, gluons, parks, antiparks, etc., to get an uh, overall uh, uh, shear viscosity, right? Uh, then uh, we, uh, you can see that if you have more parks than antiparks, your, weight, your weighting will be different, right? And then the shear viscosity of the parton matter will be different. Although for the same, uh, you know, the, the, the formula for each uh, type of uh, scattering, like QQ, is the same, no matter what uh, was the barren uh, potential. But uh, but uh, then, you know, in the barren rich uh, matter, uh, you will have more quarks than antiquarks, then the QQ scattering will be more important uh, for your eta, eta than the Q bar, Q bar scattering, right? So implicitly, uh, that reflects the net variable, you know, chemical potential effect. Okay, thank you for your answer. And the second question is, uh, so why the C method uh, better than the rest method? Could you define the reason? How to understand? Yeah, actually, we don't really know. Uh, uh, we, we can have some feeling, right? I mean, we don't exactly know. Uh, like I said, uh, you know, these methods, right? Uh, these methods were written for isotopic scatterings for the first three that do not work. The RTA, uh, Navy Stokes, and the uh, Israel Sword. And then, but for, iso for isotopic scatterings, they all work, right? The results are basically the same. But then they are generali generalized to uh, anisotropic scatterings. They are not really derived. They are generalized based on the uh, idea of the transport cross section. So it's not really, uh, how to say, a, a, a strict or, 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 or it's not derived strictly. But the uh, Chandler Unscott uh, method. Uh, applies uh, no matter uh, what angular distribution you have. So it's not generalized. It's not a guest, let's say. And also uh, the C method uh, uh, can be improved by order by order. Uh, they, they, they kind of uh, expand the distribution function with, diff uh, with uh, at different orders, and then uh, you can uh, uh, obtain the results. And we are only showing the first order result, but uh, that's that's uh, 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 good enough already. Okay, thank you for sharing your understanding. Uh, hi, hi, I, I have one question. Oh. Uh, yeah. So, so I, actually, I also use the APT for published morning papers. But in the, when I tested the um, beta OS, uh, I found that there's a difference between the APT and the hydro calculation, especially the values. So, uh, can you 
Could you please comment on this? Uh, well, do you mean the do you mean the Mandy paper? Um, uh, like uh, if if you if I use a uh, a different uh, ETOS in IBT, somehow the values is is quite different too. From uh, high So uh, what's the uh, so so first when you say you use different data over S for MPT, then one has again uh, one has to use a relation to relate uh, uh, it over S to uh -huh. cross section, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. what's the relation? I mean, uh, this whole talk is about the relation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually, um, in very early papers, we always use a. Uh, uh the the up value right the up left formula this value right yeah yeah so yeah yeah first uh so so as i, I try to show here uh this formula has uh, uh a couple problems uh and now we know that uh so this formula is the blue line versus temperature Mm -hmm. And the correct uh, answer should be the red line. Uh, so, so then with with the correct relation, then one can really. Uh, so, so it's difficult for a transform model, right? With right. the correct relation, only with that can you uh, map uh, it or S to the cross section, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that could be one reason, and another reason. Uh, but that, uh, uh, but even after you fix this problem, let's say you use the correct uh, Chapman Unscott mapping to convert your eight or S value, let's say uh, one millibar, uh, 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 like, let's say one over four pack, two mm -hmm. cross section. Uh, actually, you cannot uh, because uh, because the uh, it or S depends on T over sigma mm -hmm. in any uh, uh, method. And uh, uh, maybe you you can think of, uh, maybe you can only think of a crude way of uh, like an average the it over S or average the temperature. You have to take an average temperature and then maybe mm, uh, to to map it to an average the cross section, right? Maybe that's uh, probably that's what you did, right? I remember mm -hmm. seeing, you know, you, you estimate the average temperature as this and that, and you be and then you open that. Uh, so even after you do that, you may not find the same H over S as the hydro model. Uh, then uh, uh, it's hard to say what uh, uh, what the reason is uh, if uh, they are different. I, I don't know how much the different they are, and because uh, uh, because. Uh, uh, you you want to use the correct C method first, yeah. and then also know the the have a good idea of the temperature. You know how do you do with the changing temperature? Because how the same S corresponds to different uh, sigma for different temperature. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I have a question. So, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, can you calculate the Chevy's constant in the phase transition region from the quark ground plasma to the harmonic phase in the phase transition region? Uh, yeah, probably not. Not, not with this formula. This formula, uh, you know, this this formula can perceive uh, perceivably calculate uh, uh, parton matter under arbitrary uh, interactions uh, 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 or scattering cross sections, including many body scattering cross sections. But for the for the hydro matter, one has one has to uh, that, that's a Totally different story, right? Uh, it's not uh, uh, this kind of formula. Uh, uh, and for the phase transition region, 
uh, I think it will be yeah a different map. This cannot. I I don't think this applies to where you have a like either a coexistence of a part of matter and a hydro matter, you know things like that. Okay. I think that's um, okay. going to be more difficult. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, later, huh? Uh, maybe sometime in April, 对对. maybe. 是的, 呃, 好的, 呃, 如果还有什么问题的话, 可以私下, 谢谢大家, uh, uh, Recording stopped.